Hi, welcome to the Knitting with Lucy podcast, episode 8. I'm Abby, and welcome back if you're rejoining me, and hello uh, for the first time if you're checking me out now. Uh, This is a podcast about knitting, and that's about it. (laughs) Sometimes some general crafty stuff. Lucy is my cat, and she is sitting at my dining room table right over there right now since um, around lunchtime. So <laughs> she's uh, she's looking at me. Um, welcome to my living room today. This is my couch that you usually see farther back behind me. It's probably self-explanatory. Um, I'm just gonna prop myself up a little bit better. Sorry. That's much better. Okay, so Today I'm, I just have my work in progress to show you a blast from the past knitting object as well as a quick recommendation. So this will probably be a short video. Um, I should probably mention where you can find me. You can find me on Ravelry as Long Ride Home as well as Instagram as Le Jardin Fleur. That information and all other information uh, that I mentioned the podcast will be in the show notes down below so feel free to check that out and we'll get started um so i'm still working on my toke pond tank this is what it looks like this is a bottom up knit in the round tank top out of linen yarn by Pam Allen. It's a paid for palette, pattern, pattern. Paid for palette, I think is what I'm gonna say, but pattern uh, from Quince and Co., which is like my favorite thing ever. Um, this is knit out of Quince and Co. Kestrel, which is an organic, 100% organic linen um, yarn made in Italy, and it's in the colorway Pebble. It's a 50 gram skein and you get about 76 yards in each one, which is not a lot, but I guess it's 50 grams, so that's what 50 grams is. Most of Quince & Co's yarn is sold in 50 gram skeins, which is good because you don't always want to, you don't always need um, 100 grams worth of, of a skein. Um, at the same time, it means more ends to weave in if you're um, working with a yarn that you don't know how to join properly like I don't, which I will discuss in a minute. So, yeah, so um, this yarn, I've showed it in the past. It's not going to focus, so that's the best I can show you. It's a chain net construction. All right, yeah. And the color is really pretty. It's um, like a steel gray with the blue to it. This is a swatch, and you can kind of see how that looks in the different lighting. It's a little bit easier than what I'm about to show you, the uh, sweater. If you watched last episode, I was kind of a little bit uh, monotone, and I apologize for that, but I spoke a lot about my swatching shenanigans, and um, despite all of that, and despite that I... I think I have gauge, my gauge might be a little bit small, yeah, just based on what it's coming out to be. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it's going to fit me, but it's kind of all of a, a gamble anyway, because I think once it's washed, it will change. So I really don't know enough to decide, let's rip it all out, plus there's no way I'm ripping it all out, because I really don't do that. <laughs> so. It's, uh, hopefully it fits. Now, the problem is that I'm running out of yarn, but we'll get to that in a second, excuse me. So, this is, um, where I'm at. I have separated to do the back of the front now. So, that's the front. It has short row shaping, so the front is shorter than the back. It looks pretty narrow. It's about 30 inches, about 15 inches wide, so that's about 30, which is the problem since I'm knitting the 33 size. 
um, but whatever. So it does have waist shaping. I'm not sure if you can see that. So it splits for the back. I've bound off stitches for the sleeve. I'm sorry, for the um, underarms. And then I'm working on the back part. And I'm working on the decreases. So A, I don't think I have the right length because this is hard to measure and I'm running out of yarn so I was pretty eager to split for the sleeves already. Um, but yeah, I'm rambling and I'm not sure what I was saying. Um, so I'm working on the back, work back forth. I'm not trying to give the pattern away but I feel like I kind of am. So I'm having a hard time discussing it. <laughs> and then you go back to the front. So the front is on um, some scrap yarn right now. That's why it looks kind of funny. So this size calls for six skeins of the Kestrel yarn. And I thought that I would for sure, you know, not be concerned about running out because the next size up also calls for six skeins, which means that there must be some yarn left over calculated into, into the size uh, 33 pattern. So, but the problem is, is that I'm really running out of yarn. Um, this is my second to last ball, and you can see it's tiny. And I have one more skein left, and that's 76 yards. And that's going to have to cover the rest of the back, plus the front, plus the sleeves, um, the ribbing around the sleeves, and the neckline. I do have a little less than half a ball left otherwise. Um, this is about half a ball. So I have a little bit of insurance, and the reason for that is something that I'm not so happy with which is that I think two of my balls had, my skeins had knots in it, so I had to chop it in half. And in general, you have a lot of ones to, ones. I really can't speak to that today. Ends to weave in because of the short yardage. And the recommendation that I saw from people was to do a Russian join, which is basically where you were a woven join, I think, where you you weave the ends together so that they're basically overlapping. You can't see anything I just did. Um, it doesn't matter, so that they're overlapping. You can look it up, a Russian join, and then you don't have to weave it in the ends. And with linen yarn, it apparently can be a challenge to weave in ends. Not that I know, because I've never done used linen yarn before. There goes my ball. But, see, I'm just trying not to drop the stitches off my needle. So, I've got a fair amount of ends to weave in. Um, I try to change my yarn balls so that it would be on the sides or towards the back of the piece. The recommendations with working with linen yarn and yarn in general is to join your yarn at the sides when we're working in pieces for a sweater so that when you're weaving it in, we, when you're sewing together the, um, the pieces, you can just weave it into your seam. But when you're knitting it around, obviously that's not possible. So I try to somewhat successfully get it on the side so that at least my kind of, my arms are hanging there and it's not like smack in the middle of the front of this. Um, most of them ended up being towards the back which is kind of fine to me also because it's the back but towards the side and I'm not going to see it so if I don't see it then it doesn't quite matter to me as much. Um, I really don't know whether this is going to fit me so it's kind of, you know, it's a shame because I spent about $60 on the yarn that I have. And so what I was getting at with that I was running out of yarn is that if I have to order another ball or two, that's another $10, $20 that I'm going to spend on a project that I'm not necessarily ever going to wear. And I'm not going to know whether it's going to fit until I wash it. So I really don't know what to do. Plus there's the issue of um, dye lot 
So if I knew now that I was going to run out of yarn, I would be working on the back piece with the new dye lot so that that's like where my hair is and it doesn't matter. If I run out of yarn by the end of this back piece, oops, I'm about to drop my stitches off. Then I'm going to rejoin it in the front and then it's just going to be like a block of a different dye lot. So this has been interesting. And a little bit stressful, but no big deal. It's, it's, a, it's an enjoyable knit for the most part. It's round and round. I wish my gauge was better. I imagine that's why I'm having problems. I know that with my swatch on size 8, which is what I'm using, my uh, gauge, is, gauge across was mostly correct. But I was for sure half inch shorter in the row gauge, which makes a big difference. So that could be why I am running out of yarn. Um, so I don't know. We'll see. I'm going to keep working on it. It's a fun knit. It's pretty heavy. I mean, pretty heavy for a summer tank top. But I guess I should have known that from the fact that it's Aaron weight yarn, but yeah, it is what it is. So I'm still working on it, and I know that if I am able to finish this once I wash it, the the um, and this is my larger needles that I probably should have used the um, drape is gets improved significantly. So we'll see. We'll see. Right now it feels kind of stiff um but i'm hoping with washing it will loosen up i hope it gets larger and that it doesn't shrink because i think it's too small so <laughs> i don't know that's, this is my problem with swatching is that i tend to start overthinking things and i feel like it would be better for me to just cast on with the recommended size needles and if it seems like ridiculously large to change but once I get down into the minutia, with especially a yarn like this, this is, that is so variable with how with the linen yarn that I'm not used to knitting with and washing it and all that, I don't know. It's just very confusing, and I don't have a brain for this sort of stuff. I'm really more of like an organic person in that I I'm not good with logic and math and puzzles and piecing things together. I'm much more kind of like a throw paint in the wall and see what happens type of person. So, but an organized paint throw in the wall, if that makes sense. <laughs> like I want to know where the color is going to land on the wall, but I'm going to throw it on the wall. So, you know, it's, it could be challenging to, with, with knitting because knitting can be really organic, but it can also be really mathematical and really, really specific. So, that's why I like knitting projects that don't really require you to have a real specific gauge like a shawl because um, for the most part it doesn't make a difference so far at least and I've knit like six shawls already so um, unless your gauge is crazy tight then I guess it would um, and if your gauge is really loose as long as you uh, like the fabric, it doesn't matter as long as you don't run out of yarn. Uh, so, yeah, I, you know, that being said, you know, about running out of yarn, I have this much left here. I've got that half a ball, I have a skein, and then I could always um, try to rip these out, which that would give me probably about another half a ball, maybe, not even. Um, yeah. So. So I had about a little more than a half a ball left after swatching. So that would give me some more. So that may do it. We'll see. So that is my Toke Pond pullover tank. And I apologize for the rambling. I, haven't, I feel like I haven't done this in a while. Even though it's, it hasn't been that long. So there's that. Next thing I wanted to show you was is a knitting blast from the past and I actually attempted to uh, record this earlier in the week and to record an episode but I didn't like it so 
I didn't end up posting it. And in that one, I showed you my first sweater that I ever knit, but I don't really feel like getting it out right now, so that would probably be best saved for another episode. So today I thought I would just show you a shawl that I haven't shown you yet that is another Blast from the Past shawl. And this is the first project that I've ever knit out of a luxury or a nice yarn. And I'm going to show it to you now. And this is what got me back into knitting. So I don't think I've ever shown this to you. I think I showed this in a podcast episode that I once... Um, recorded but never posted so if I have shown this to you I am really sorry but we're going to show it again I guess. I know I've showed you my Antarctic shawl and my Shailen shawl so I don't think I've shown you this. So this is knit out of Madeline Tosh DK which is a 100% Superwash Merino um, DK weight yarn and it's in the colorway Lowlands I think. Um, I knit this out of about one and a half skeins. So the second colorway, the dye lot is different, which you may notice, but just slightly in that there's there's deeper shades in it, but it blends in well in, in the shawl, and it's mainly in the last repeat of this pattern, so I don't find it to be a big deal, but I'll show it to you. And this is the Age and Brass of Steam shawl. And I love it. I mean, the original pattern only has three repeats. So, um, you have this one, this one, and this one. So I added this last repeat, plus that garter edging, I guess, at the bottom. And the colors are being kind of washed out. Let's see if it gets any deeper. Not really. Yeah, that just kind of helped it. So it's it's greens with blues. Um, we'll put it on, and I I wear it like a triangular shawl uh, kerchief, and I love it. It's really really soft. This is the first time that I ever knit with, like I said, a luxury yarn, but a yarn that is 100% wool and realize that there are some yarns that I can wear that are 100% wool and not feel really itchy, so. And this is what brought me back into knitting, actually. I hadn't been knitting for a long time and I decided that I wanted to knit this pattern because I was watching the Freakish Lemon podcast with Adrian who I don't think watches this, but hello if you ever do. He's awesome. If you've never watched his podcast, I absolutely recommend it. Um, he, his podcasts are pretty long, for me at least, and I usually end up watching them um, in two sessions, which is fine. And his projects really range. He's does all different crafts, crochet, knitting, uh, cross stitch, needle felting I think he started recently. Um, and he uses all different yarns, so yarns that you get at Michaels, but also luxury yarns as well. So that's nice. Um, and I also like that he crochets because I am originally a crocheter, so that makes me happy whenever I see people are crocheting. Um, and he also talks a lot about like different nerdy interests like Star Wars and stuff like that so if you are interested in that kind of like hobbyist style and that's not an insult at all <laughs> um, you should check out his podcast so he was knitting this uh, I guess it would be a year two years ago now a year ago a year ago and so I saw it and I really liked the pattern and I thought that it would be a really good pattern to start with as a first shawl pattern, uh, which it absolutely is. And so, but I decided that I was gonna order some luxury yarn and if I was gonna spend time knitting something. And I did. So I was, I'm really happy with this. This was, 
I, I had knit this and then I didn't have anything to block it with and it sat in a bag for about six months because I wasn't really into knitting at that time. And then um, my computer just went onto screen saver mode. Um, and then I had my mom block it for me and it was like, this is so awesome, I want to knit all the shawls. So that kind of started my shawl knitting um, frenzy. So, but if you have never knit a triangular shawl where it grows in this direction from top down, so you, went, you start with a very tiny little triangle at the top and then you keep increasing along the sides and in the middle, um, you should knit this, this pattern um, if you're a beginner knitter in general. It teaches you how to do the garter tab, that's how you start um, most triangular shawls and that's how you start this one. Um, and I'd never done that before, but really if you just follow the directions, you can figure it out. So I think that's good. Um, if you knit a lot of shawls, this pattern is going to be mindless knitting for you, which I love. So if you're looking for a pattern that's mindless knitting, then this is a good one. And the size is really, really easy to change. You just keep knitting the repeats. So, yeah. I, I don't know how you would have, this, this shawl would have been a size that, like, is wearable with only three repeats. And it might have been because I... I knit this in a size 7 needle, I'm not sure what the pattern called for, but I think it, it's smaller than the pattern called for. But I just wanted to use the needles that I had, and I liked the fabric, so works for me. So that's my Agent Brass of Steam kerchief, as inspired by the Freakish Lemon. Wow, I can't believe we're already at 21 minutes. That must be because I am seriously rambling today. Um... I kind of love folding my shawls. Am I the only one? It's not weird. They're kind of hard to fold, so maybe that's why I like folding them. <laughs> I don't know. So I love this. And that's the darker uh, shade. And Eva, if you're watching this, I have to mention your name every time, right? It's like a lot at this point. Uh, I sent you when I sent you that um, letter in the mail, this was one of the yarns I sent you was added from this shawl. So you will know exactly what this looks like. So that's that. And then the last thing I wanted to share with you is just real quick is a recommendation. And I had been looking on Goodreads is where I, uh, the website that I go on to find book recommendations, which is sometimes successful and sometimes not. But that's fun. Uh, I don't even know what my Goodreads username is, so <laughs> I, I can't remember. But um, I only use it just to find books. Uh, so I was looking for books recently to find to read, and I saw this on there. And I, to be honest with you, I thought it was a graphic novel, which it absolutely is not. Um, and probably a lot of these comics, which that's what it is. It's a little comic book, which I'm going to show you. It can be found online, but... Um, I wanted to show it to you because I enjoyed it, and it's called Soppy, uh, a love story by Philippa or Philippa Rice, and I'll read you the back of this because, and look how cute that cover is, because um, this is just so cute. So it says, true love isn't always about the big romantic gestures. Sometimes it's about sympathizing with someone whose tea has gone cold or reading together and sharing a quilt. When two people move in together, it soon becomes apparent that the little things mean an awful lot. The throwaway moments in life become meaningful when you spend them in the company of someone you love. Sapi is Philippa's right, Philippa Rice's collection of comics and illustrations based on real-life moments from her boy, with her boyfriend. From grocery shopping to silly arguments and snuggling in front of the television, Sapi captures the universal life experience, universal experience of sharing a life together. I'm sorry and celebrates the beauty of finding romance all around us. So this book is, is adorable. Um, I don't wanna show you specific ones, but the illustrations are just so, so cute. And it's just like basic moments, some of them, like just one image, like these two are walking in the rain together. And then 
hanging up laundry and the whole book is in black white and red the illustrations which I think is really cute and then some of them are a little bit longer kind of comic strips and there's one this this book is literally my life there's one where it shows her routine from getting up in the morning to going to bed to his routine getting up in the morning to go to bed and how it's different and they come together at the end of it and it's just like um, me and my husband's I shower in the morning, he showers at night, like it's the same thing, so I think that's really cute. Um, and then there's one where she's knitting, and uh, I want to see if I can find it. Just past the uh, routine ones. <laughs> I'm sorry guys. I probably won't even find it. And then, it's just a really, really cute book. I think I made it up. Alright, so, Soppy Love Stories, check it out. Thanks so much for watching my podcast today. Uh, I hope that you have a great week and take care of yourself. Bye. Happy knitting.